Hi, thanks for joining me. I'm Carla with Race to Walk, and we're going to be talking about an Advent read-along of The Man Born to be King by Dorothy L. Sayers. But before we get started, a little bit about this channel. Here we share good thoughts about good words, and I publish videos about books and also Bible studies. So if you're interested in either of those things, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications so you can get updates about new videos. So here's the thing. You said it's an Advent devotional. It starts on December 1st, and obviously this is way late. Yes, I know. Life has been a little crazy. But there's a reason for that. I'm going to share that at the end of this video. I'm trying to record this so I don't have to edit it. I don't know if that's going to work. This is the th third time I've gone through, but we're going to be covering three things today. We're going to be talking about the details of the read through, a little bit about Dorothy Sayers, and also I'm going to share like kind of what's been up. So the details of the read along, the book is The Man Born to be King by Dorothy L. Sayers. It's actually a play and it's only 52 pages, which I am like Thank you, Jesus. Short thing, 52 pages I can deal with. The hosts of the read-along are Christy Lewis, Dostoevsky in Space. She's the coordinator of this. And Victoria at A Musical Bookworm, who is hosting a Discord channel for the discussion of this. And also Emma at A Bookish Princess. And if I remember correctly, I've done a read-along with them on Letters to a Diminished Church. I think that it's Emma that has read the most. Dorothy L. Sayers, it might have been Christy. I'm not sure, but I think Emma's read the most of her work. So in addition to the ongoing discussion in the Discord channel, there are two live stream dates. The first one is this Saturday, December 10th. And this is just going to be like reading sprints. So it's basically you just come hang out, do whatever you want, like whether it's reading or whatever. And uh, they take breaks and have chats in between time. And I'm not sure how long it's scheduled to go, but it starts at... 10 a.m. Pacific, noon Central, and 1 p.m. Eastern. The discussion, the wrap-up discussion, is on December 31st, and that is at 10 a.m., same time, 10 a.m. Pacific, noon Central, and 1 p.m. Eastern. So hopefully you can join us for one of those. Like I said, I, life has been a little crazy, so I have not started reading it, and I haven't shown up in the discord channel yet but i'm planning to so if you're interested in this head over to the discord channel and we can be having chats while we're reading through this for the rest of the month seriously 52 pages and it's a play it's a play it won't take that long so the next thing is a little bit about dorothy l sayers she was a member of the Inklings, but people all know C.S. Lewis and J.R. Tolkien, but she's kind of a forgotten Inkling and especially, I think, underappreciated because not only was she not one of the big two, but she also was a woman. And so a lot of times women's work during that time, as well as today, was discredited or diminished. She lived from 1893 to 1957. She went to Summerfield College at Oxford and she studied classical and modern languages, but at that time, they did not award degrees to women. When they finally did start awarding degrees to women, she was one of the first women to receive a degree from Oxford, and she eventually got a master's degree. One of the things that I've noticed about Dorothy Sayers is that she was really big into community and especially the artistic community. She's a great theologian, but she's really well known for her mystery writers, Sir, Sir Peter or Lord Peter Whimsey. Um, she was in a, a mystery writers club that G.K. Chesterton started, and she was also a president. And I think if I'm remembering this correctly, she also had like some sort of women's like literary club, I think, that she had going on. But and then she was a member of the Inklings. So she was really big about community. Um, if you read apologetics, probably the work of hers that you will be most likely to be aware of is called The Mind of the Maker. It's a great essay about how artistic imagination is really like a reflection of God. And you may say, oh, that sounds like Tolkien's idea of sub-creator. And you would be right. As I was reading the letters to a diminished church and the other read through I did with Christy in this group, I noticed that a lot. There were ideas that she talked about that I saw not only developed, but there are things that were credited to like Tolkien and Lewis as ideas. And I was thinking, 
did she predate them? And you couldn't really tell in that particular book that we read because there was no dating on the essays. But it could be that they were just, you know, if they were in this group, they were all talking about those things at the same time. But I have not read anything else by Dorothy Sayers. I did download some of her books, but I just haven't got around to reading them this year. Her, I thought her best work, her best essays in the Letters to a Diminished Church were better than Lewis's. Her brilliance is brighter. I think like Lewis is more consistent. So if you like Lewis, if you like uh, Tolkien's writing on imagination and self-creation, I think you'll really like her work. If you want to read more about that idea, uh, Annie Crawford wrote an essay called Joy in the Mind of the Reader that really it pulls a lot from Dorothy Sayers' The Mind of the Maker. So that's another resource. As far as uh, Dorothy Sayers as a person, she worked in advertising. She was a copywriter and my undergraduate degree is in marketing and advertising. And she, like I said, she was really big into community. And, uh, one of the things I really don't see mentioned that much, she had kind of a rocky love life. There was some, some drama there, not only drama, but trauma. But I think just a little bit, I've read about her, appreciate her as someone who's a strong woman that writes and kind of bucking expectations of women during that time and, you know, protesting. And, um, that is one aspect of changing things, but I think just going and being and doing is more important and has longer impact. And that is what she did. You know, she was kind of a trailblazer in reshaping how people saw women and, um, what they thought they could do. And even some of her friends, cause Lewis had some ideas about, she said he just kind of had a blink when it came to women. <laughs> He's just like, I don't know, it wasn't necessarily a bad view of women, but it was just a lack of understanding. She would recommend Lewis's work to her friends, but she would always qualify it. And she would just say, you know, I just think he's a rather frightened bachelor. <laughs> I think that changed when he met the love of his life, Joy, but it took him a while to get there. And Dorothy was his friend through it. <laughs> she helped him get there. So I think you could probably credit some of his later works with the influence of Dorothy Sayers, just her being a friend to him. It's a little bit about Dorothy Sayers. Now, as far as this particular book, The Man Born to be King, it's a play that was originally written for the radio, and it's kind of like... Um, taking elements from the different gospels and telling the story of Jesus's life. Christy Lewis has a really great explanation video on her channel. I'll link to that. I also discovered just as I was looking up the links to the other videos about this read through that there is a new annotated edition of the man born to be King annotated by Catherine Ware. That book is coming out January 23rd of next year. So it's too late for this read through, but Catherine does have a YouTube channel and she did a great video explaining Dorothy's ideas in the mind of the maker. And so I will link to that video and to her channel also to the annotated edition that's coming out on the 23rd. If you go through this read through and, and you enjoy it, then you might want to consider getting the annotated version. So now a little bit about uh, life and reading The Man Born to be King right now. I, I'm not going to get into the whole thing. I'm trying to keep this video short. And I talked to one person about all this kind of towards the beginning. We talked for three hours, so I can't do that. But long and short of it is, I've mentioned several times that I've been helping my friend Mark Ritchie teach some of his classes in Pakistan in via Zoom, not in Pakistan. And uh, through that, you got to be friends with some Afghan Christians that evacuated from Afghanistan last year. And uh, things are getting pretty bad there because um, UN refugee designations are moving like mud. Um, Pakistan has said that they don't have valid visas. They have to be out by December 31st. The attention of the world is on Ukraine and a lot of people have pretty much forgotten about Afghanistan. And so just even things are kind of tumultuous and kind of intense. And so let me just preface this by saying, I don't know anything about immigration. This is not, I'm not doing this because, um, I know what I'm doing or I have any experience or expertise in this because I don't at all. I've just been learning as I go. I'm just trying to walk through this with them and for them to do anything, um, and not be returned to Afghanistan it's ruled by the Taliban. Every single one of them in this group has already lost family, at least one family member to the Taliban. 
But in order to even stay in Pakistan, let alone immigrate anywhere, they have to have their documentation. So in order to get a visa anywhere, they have to have a valid passport. In order to have a valid passport, they have to have a valid Afghan ID. In order to have an Afghan ID, they have to have a birth certificate. And there are babies that have been born there that don't have a birth certificate. And that's one thing that we can get at the Afghanistan embassy in Pakistan. So we can do it. It's just they don't have money for it. That's the other thing. These groups have had no help or little help. So that's been the plan, the first step. And a friend very generously offered to pay for the documents at the embassy. The problem is getting money to them. And that's been an adventure. So um, <laughs> this is kind of a crazy story. I mean, it's all crazy. That's why I'm not going to get into the details. I could go on for hours about this. But as it relates to the man born to be king, Mary and Joseph escaped from Herod to Egypt. And they had the means to do so because the wise men from the east brought gifts, right? And the wise men were from Parthia and modern day Afghanistan was in the Parthian empire. So I just thought it was kind of appropriate reading this play about the life of Jesus during Advent while I'm trying to get some Afghan babies, some birth certificates. I thought it was kind of appropriate. And I'm not going to get any more to that. If I ever come to your mind, I probably need prayer about something. Not even just related to that. So just you can just keep me in your prayers. You can keep Team Kabul Hope in your prayers. And um, that's all I'm going to say about it right now. But anyway, it's going back to the read-through. I hope you join us for the discussion or one or both of the live streams. And again, I'll link everything into the chat. And we will read through Dorothy Sayers' imaginative work about the life of Jesus. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.